What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be doing the install on the Eco Solaris 1 ton solar hybrid heat pump. If you watched my last video, we kind of did a brief introduction on this thing, had a quick look at it. This is an R32 solar hybrid heat pump. It is 240 volts. We're going to be installing it out here in my garage. Um, I like to use the garage in the summer, maybe a bit of a workout space in the future. Obviously it gets pretty hot in the summer and then we have to heat it in the winter as well. So I've got the mount set up over here kind of right centered on the TV and the workbench. I think I might raise it up just a little bit more, but uh, we're gonna get started on the install. I'll kind of walk you through it. I'm gonna be doing just a solar install, an off-grid install on this today, maybe 240 in the future or 48 volts uh, when I have my second project that's gonna be coming to this channel later this month. So as you can see with the middle hole, we hit a stud there. I'm gonna go ahead and rotate this up out of the way. We're gonna do drywall plugs on either side to make it nice and secure. This is a pretty standard bracket. All the mini splits kind of have this same style. Gonna go ahead and prep the head unit while it's down here on the bench. Once again, this is a pretty standard four wire communication. All these wires are labeled. You just have to match them up with the terminals on the head unit as well as the terminals outside. As you can see here, we have D plus, D minus, S and a ground. So as long as you match them up, you should be all set. Okay, so the indoor unit is prepped and hung. That was pretty quick. A lot of uh, people struggle with this next part, where to drill the hole. You want to do about an inch and a half, two inch hole to your outside uh, wall. Some of these units come with templates. A lot of them don't. This one doesn't. But basically, you just want to tilt this out a little bit. Look up in here. This is where your drain and your line set are going to be. And then I just take a marker, put a couple dots on the wall, and uh, send a hole through. Hope for the best. Okay, so I'm going to go with a two inch hole saw. This is a pretty aggressive bit. So I actually run, like to run these in reverse. When you're drilling something like drywall or siding, you'll see it. Kind of tears up the wall, makes a little bit less of a, a mess. Got the vacuum ready here. We're going to try to keep the dust to a minimum and uh, yeah, send a hole to the outdoors. Okay, we've got our hole drilled for the pass through. I actually thought this garage was insulated all these years, but looking in this wall cavity, it is definitely not. So that's a bit of a surprise. Uh, I've got a pilot bit on here. We're going to send a little hole center to the outside and then we'll go outside and clean it up from there all right guys there is our hole i kind of forgot this hole saw is actually pretty beat it was okay for the drywall and it was good enough for the siding but i couldn't get it through the plywood had to grab the old oscillating saw if you guys don't have an oscillating saw you should definitely get one anytime something goes wrong that's kind of the tool i go to gets you out of a jam pretty much every time these things are super handy yes it is yellow i kind of flip flop back and forth from Milwaukee to DeWalt, what can I say? I like them both. Okay, so now we've got our hole drilled. We have to take our line set and our drain, all of our piping and just bend it out gently to line up with this wiring. That's all gonna pass through our hole. So we'll start with this one. That's our drain. Start with our line. These are usually corrugated right here at the bend. So you don't have to worry too much about kinking them. They generally cooperate. We'll pull this back a bit just to make sure. Yeah, we've got like a spring here for the bend so it doesn't kink. So we should be all set to turn this just like that. Get our drain, get our wiring. I'll put a zip tie on this and then we'll pass it all through. Okay, so I've got the wiring through the hole. This is always the most fun part if you're working by yourself. I'm gonna try to get this up and through without bothering my wife. She's uh, hanging out inside with our baby, so. Here we go. Okay, so everything is outside. You wanna put a nice gentle bend on the line set, get it pointed down, and then we're ready for the fun part. That's actually probably the hardest part is just getting this thing up on the wall. Everything after this is pretty straightforward. So I got these rails and all these holes prepped last night in the garage with some good lighting. It's supposed to be pretty rainy today, so not sure if I'm going to get everything done, but I wanted to give myself a pretty good shot. So we're going to get it mounted up here. Got some stainless hardware to keep things from rusting, so we should be good.
Okay, the unit is all mounted, nice and level, nice and solid. The manual does call for 30 centimeters behind the unit, between the, the unit and the wall. I'm cutting it pretty close here, but it is on a stand. I can always move it if it becomes an issue. Um, I do like putting them on a stand when you can. One, it minimizes damage to the wall and uh, gives you a little flexibility if you have to move things out. That's always a good sound. You want to make sure you have some air pressure behind that. That's just nitrogen. Uh, when you take the cap off, you know you have a good sealed coil, no holes, no damage. If you open this cap and you hear no nitrogen coming out, you could have a problem. Now we're going to start getting the line set fit up. I have the flare cap off. Always like to have a good look at the flares. This one looks good. No burrs or anything strange on the seat. So. We're gonna get it connected up, kind of get it roughed, uh, roughed in here for the unit, see how we're looking. Okay, we're gonna get the line set tightened up with the Nipex uh, channel locks. These things are awesome. If you have never used these, you should definitely look at a set. They're a little expensive, but anytime you're doing brass, flare nuts, any uh, anything like that where normal channel locks would beat up the brass, these things do an awesome job. We got the calibrated certified torque wrench right here. This thing will beep when I go too tight, so that'll be perfect. Just kidding, guys, but you should probably have a torque wrench. I don't have one with me, so uh, we'll have to make do. All right, so I've got the line set run, at least one piece. It's gonna drop straight down here behind the unit come over here and then I guess I'm gonna be showing you guys how I do flares because I can't bring myself to coil this up behind the unit. I know most people do. Most DIY installs end up that way, but I just don't wanna look at that. I'm gonna probably take six feet out of the line set. I'll have to account with that uh, in the refrigerant a little bit. So um, yeah, I didn't really wanna do it. I was hoping I could just move the unit down the wall a little bit, but it would be like way down here at the end of the house trying to use up all that line set. So we're gonna chop it. I'm gonna do new flares and just do it the right way, make it look nice. All right guys, bad news. I have made a pretty horrible discovery. So uh, this is not a 3 8 line set. See here on my flaring tool, there's 3 8 Kind of just drops in there willy nilly. I thought about it right before I cut it. I thought, let me grab my flaring tool, I'll clamp it on the pipe, make sure it's gonna fit. And then I just went ahead and cut it without checking. So basically I'm gonna be, I cut this little stub off. I'm gonna reuse the factory flare and I'm just gonna to have to weld it right there. So a little bit of a hiccup. Um, I mean, it is what it is. Uh, I didn't wanna leave the line set coiled up so I'll probably have to do that with this other one too because I'm guessing it's not quarter inch. No, six and seven sixteenths. So make note of that before you try to do your own flares on any of these line sets. They are not your standard three eighths and quarter inch. Okay, so I'm getting ready to swedge this little nipple. Made sure I've got my nut on it before I do it. Uh, I just did a little test one on this piece of copper here. You can see it fits perfectly. So that'll be fine. It's just an extra step. Um, Should have probably double checked that, but I would have had to do it either way. I don't want those line sets coiled up in the back, so we're gonna go ahead with it. I'm using these little uh, drill swedgers. I have another video on this. I'll link it up below if you wanna check them out. These are like 15 bucks. They come in super handy. They actually do a pretty nice swedge for what they are. Um, you know, there are certain applications you wouldn't wanna use them, but for this, it's gonna work just fine. Okay, I've got the new flare adapter swedged on. I've got a little clip back here holding the line set up and away from the unit. So uh, I also have nitrogen flowing through this pipe, through the indoor head, just to keep any carbon from accumulating while I braze this. We're gonna hit it with the torch here and we should be all set. Okay. Got a little bit of braise on there. Crisis has been averted. 
Uh, like I said, I'm flowing nitro through here because this carbon you get on the outside that builds up, you also get that on the inside if you're not flowing nitrogen. So big problem for inverter, mini splits, EXVs, stuff like that. You do want to make sure you're flowing nitrogen. So uh, yeah, that should line us up good for this side. I'll have to do it again for our smaller line set. It is starting to rain here. I might have to get the umbrella set up because we're going to get a little bit wet. Okay guys, line sets are all done. Crisis averted. We got everything looking pretty nice here. I welded up the uh, quarter inch, we'll call it. Not quite quarter inch, but got everything welded up. It's got some nitrogen on it right now. Just doing a pressure test. I have tucked the wire for the communication up through the pass through. And we're gonna wire it the same way as the inside, D plus, D minus, and S with our ground. We're gonna save L1, L2 for another day. Um, yeah, gonna snap the wires in there and we're getting pretty close. Okay, we've got everything wired up. Pretty straightforward, four wire communication setup. Same as any other mini split. We are going to pop the cover back on. We'll let the nitrogen go, the pressure test held just fine, and then we'll start our vacuum. Okay guys, lines and vacuum are just about done. Um, I have the vacuum off. We're sitting at 460 microns, so we've got a nice deep vacuum with the pump off. Probably hit it once more. I got some drain tubing here. I just realized it did not come with any drain tubing. It's just got the universal corrugated stuff on there, so you can pretty much use whatever you want. Vinyl drain tube, PVC, garden hose, whatever you have. Luckily, I did have some of this stuff sitting around from another mini split install. I think it was a Daikin or something. They pretty much all use the same stuff, so I am going to get that installed, let the vacuum go one more time, and then we will let the charge go into the lines. It is starting to rain pretty good. Had to uh, pull this stuff in out of the rain. Got the umbrella set up, so not doing too bad. Okay guys, the vacuum is all done. Everything was a great success. I'm going to go ahead and open the valves here. Um, with any luck, we should hear a little bit of hissing of the refrigerant running into the line set. If we don't, we could have a problem. So I like to leave the gauge hooked up uh, until I've released the charge. If you pull this off while it's under vacuum, you risk getting a little bit of air in the system. So we're gonna start with this one. Get you nice and close so you can hear it. There we had a nice hiss. And then we just wanna take this all the way out and back seat it just like that. Can do this one next. And you typically won't hear anything on the second one. Make sure we're back seated. And then we can go ahead and remove our gauge. A little puff of refrigerant. And we'll pop this off here next. And we're just about set to fire it up. I'm gonna have to uh, get the panels set up in the backyard because we are off grid on this one. So I'll get that set up here. I might wait for a little break in the rain and then we'll give it a go. Okay, here we have it. We are all done for the most part. Everything turned out pretty good. We've got a nice straight line set running over here to this side of the unit. This is all gonna get finished up with line hide. I just don't have any yet. I'm gonna take a little break. It's starting to rain pretty good. And uh, if we get some decent weather this afternoon, I'll probably get some panels set up and we will fire this thing up. All right, guys, I took a little break, had some lunch. The rain is still coming down hot and heavy, but I couldn't leave it alone. I had to hook up the solar. I've got four 400 watt panels just kind of laying out in the yard, hooked up to the unit. Um, it's really rainy, really cloudy. I don't know if it's going to be enough to actually run the unit, but it should be enough power to at least turn the fan on, turn the uh, interface on, get the app connected, stuff like that. So uh, we're going to hit the magic button on the remote here and see what happens. There we go. Heard a little beep. We have our temperature. We have a solar icon, so we are obviously making something. Uh, I don't know much about the remote just yet. Let's go to mode. Cool. We'll set it for 20 degrees and we will just see what happens. Okay, so we do not have enough solar right now to start the compressor. You can hear it trying. I'll put the app up on screen here, show you what it's trying to do. It builds a little bit of solar, tries to start the compressor, and then the voltage drops, and we just don't have enough. 
not much we can do about it today. It's very, very cloudy, pouring rain, so we will have to save that for another day. Uh, you guys already know I'm going to be doing a bunch of videos on this, so stay tuned. Uh, I'm going to try to do weekly uploads here for a little while, get lots of good info on this AC unit for you. I'll have all the links below, check out the website, check out the store. Uh, it's about to go live here, so once again, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video, and uh, hope you enjoyed it.